can start. Yes, I think we can start. Yeah. A very good afternoon to all. On behalf of Placement Cell of Shivaji College, I am privileged to welcome our chief guest for today's program, Mr. Prahar Singhal, guest of honor, Ms. Neelu Singhal, our respected principal, Dr. Shiv Kumar Sahadev, retired faculty members, Dr. G.P. Mishra, other uh, our, uh, faculty members from the college and participating students to internship and placement week, Caseta 21. The event becomes even more special as Shivaji College is celebrating its diamond jubilee year with 60 years from the time of establishment. Shivaji College is the preferred choice for students from imparting knowledge to first-generation learners in 1960s to catering to academic needs of the students in the present day. As the transition from school to college marks one milestone of students' life, the internship and final placement marks another milestone, that of joining the class of working professionals. This is the start of a new journey their career for which all the years of education has been preparing them for. Internships and jobs are a desired natural outcome of the academic learning students undergo at the college. And they are aided in achieving this goal by the placement cell that works round the year to provide such opportunities to the students. The cell plans the activities by conducting a survey to analyze the interest of students in placement and internship opportunities and aligns the activities accordingly. It organizes skill development workshops, seminars, and talks that give students ample insight into the scenario prevailing in the current job market. It encourages students to take up internships during summer break as it gives them the industry exposure and makes them ready for placements. The cell also coordinates with the Central Placement Cell of University of Delhi to ensure that students also have access to the opportunities provided by our university. Here is a short video highlighting the placement cell activities of the last year. That's the uh, network issue with them. Okay. Our dynamic principal, Dr. Shiv Kumar Sahade, has always been instrumental in leading the way for the college. I request, sir, to speak a few words of encouragement to our students. Thank you, Mr. Prakhar Singhal, Nilu Singhal, 
all my colleagues and dear students i am very happy the split wing cell of shivaji college has organized this five days program as i told all my students that internship and placement are very important and before placement internship is very important and i request all my students to go for at least two internship before they leave the college because internship is a basic platform to get a good placement placement so i request my guests to give my students opportunity for uh, internships as well as placements so that they find themselves place at better place and i'm happy to know that you are also alumni of shivaji college so it's a proud moment for all of us and i'm sure that this fair will be a success and all my students will get an opportunity uh, they will be in touch directly with the, so many companies more than 50 companies are coming obviously uh, maximum or will be on online mode but uh, as my son son get a good placement only because of a good internship so i can understand the role of internship to get a good placement so my best wishes to all of you i am sure you all will get a good place to secure a good future so thank you very much i will not take much time thanks a lot thank you sir your words always infuse us with enthusiasm I now request Ms. Suman Karbanda, convener, placement cell, to say a few words. A uh, very good evening to all of you, to our guest, Mr. Prakar, Ms. Nilu, our principal, Dr. Sahdev, my dear colleagues, especially our retired colleagues as well, our recruiters, and of course, my dear students. A very warm welcome and a very good evening to all of you. It is a matter of pride for me personally. And for Shivaji College, where both the guests are our alumni, what better scenario than today, when former students shall kickstart an event which is of immense importance to our current students, and these guests will be a great motivation for them. When I talk of my students here, we have two kind of audiences: those who aspire to take up jobs right after college, and the others who plan to take up higher studies. the place and cell and of course the college caters to both of them whatever be your career plans the college lays great emphasis on internships and it helps them to uh, be future ready and give them maximum exposure possible we urge our students especially in the first year and second year to take this internship seriously and in every vacation possible that they get uh, internships are a great way for graduates to gain entry Uh, while internships can pay less than your full-time positions, but they often result in better resumes, good recommendation letters, and sometimes even the brighter the chances of full-time positions in your dream jobs. So even if you wish to take up higher, this experience will leave you much wiser, much confident, and be make you future ready. Exposure at this stage shall really go a long way. um uh, now here i would like to say that uh, we at our college take up internships and i'm saying this again at the beginning understand that the kind of responsibility and experience that they will get especially even in small companies they will be valuable and they'll be uh, you know they will help you in furthering your leadership qualities my colleagues and my placement team also keeps emphasizing this and uh, i sometimes feel that the uh, education policy should make internships mandatory in all colleges uh talking of job scenarios uh, we have two big industry leaders here to talk about them and although i will touch briefly upon some points here Last year during the covid times we saw that a couple of companies had stalled their hiring operations uh, we experienced that some had selected our students for pre final round but did not finish the final round because the lockdown had begun and there were some companies who even stalled their projects so our students couldn't join but this year i see a lot of optimism or a silver line 
seems to be visible. So Prakara and Nilu can tell us more in detail about the actor scenario. Uh, one of the most interesting behavioral shifts that the Indian workforce had seen today is uh, it is a green shoot of the pandemic, and that is remote working culture. Led by the COVID-19 pandemic, hiring for remote jobs compared to pre-COVID levels is likely to rise. The job seekers, my students, you should be open to freelancing and part-time part -time jobs to gain experiences in your respective domains and your experiences and answer your, uh, and also use these uh, jobs as stepping stones to network with your prospective recruiters. The movement toward online learning also has expedited the need for teaching tools to adapt its delivery of study material for the students. This has boosted recruiters demanding for a very specific skill called instructional design. This instructional design combined with education technology and communication is we foresee a rise in requirement of youngsters who can help in digital transformation, who can help develop innovative methods to deliver products deliver uh, study material, de deliver services to customers. With companies becoming, a learn, uh, becoming more lean uh, in terms of jobs, you might be expected to work cross-functionally also. That means you might go beyond the scope of your job description. It would be interesting to see the evolution of hiring as well as evolution of work in the coming year. Upskilling is one thing that I lay emphasis always, I tell my students. Upskilling will be a key to be employable, employable in the current and in the coming years. I was reading a recent survey posted by our company. Job seekers are focusing on self-development through upskilling, through adding to their knowledge in newer domains. Businesses are moving to cloud and the ever increasing dependence on data is increasing. Demand for skill is increasing. Cloud computing, therefore, data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital marketing, financial management, advanced Excel. These are some of the uh, topics which you should take up for soft skilling. These will help you gain plum jobs. Uh, because soft skills are becoming an integral part of the working conditions. And there is a preference for people who can collaborate remotely, who can communicate effectively, and who can manage their time well within the, uh, you know, online system and without the confines of office setup. Placement Cell, therefore, has tied up with an online company called uh, Great Learning. It is an online ed tech company. And they are offering us courses, which I mentioned just now for their portal. And our students are making use of them free of cost. I urge all my students across all the years and courses to take up these jobs, uh, sorry, these courses seriously. And also tell your fellow students to enroll into these courses. The college is uh, providing a various opportunity to students Last year, we had collaborated with Coursera and TEDx, and many of our students and also faculty had benefited from these courses. One of the key sectors which I feel is expected to drive hiring in India this year, of course, apart from IT, which is a growing sector always, uh, the sector is uh, medical healthcare sector. It was at the forefront of the uh, pandemic era. And as the demand to hire the right talent increased due to pandemic, the medical sector was first to bounce back in 2020 itself. The sector saw strong trends, is expected to see strong trends in the future. Lot of uh, things to look forward to for life science students. But alongside, we also expect a growth in allied services, hospital management services, logistics, sales, marketing, 
equipment manufacturing, etc., which could leave enough opportunities for graduates from computer science, humanities, and commerce. Social sector is another sector which we can look at and we hope it will rise in the future, starting from the current year. In a competitive world where consumers and businesses have several options to choose from, sales has become a very crucial skill online. Connecting with consumers, providing a differentiated and consisting, consistent consumer experience uh, is one skill that our students should be ready to take on. Uh, and I would tell them, please gear up your skills, gear up for these kinds of jobs. There is a lot to look forward to. You have to, uh, even if you get small companies, you get startups, you must take them because getting experience in multiple departments and roles in these small companies can be very enriching. Then you can see what is your calling, what is interesting you, and what is infusing your spirits. People are saying these are tough times, these are hard times for job seekers, but I see very optimistic and a silver lining in the coming years. I wish all my students the very best. Whatever you aspire for, work for it. Grab the opportunities, keep your spirits elated, keep your thoughts positive, stay healthy, stay safe, and follow all the protocols for COVID prevention. I'm really thankful to our guest speakers, Mr. Prakar Singhal and Ms. Neelu Singhal. I would like to uh, give a special mention that they have been our students and it is indeed a matter of pride. And I hope uh, you will also equally be elated to address current students from your alma mater. I would also like to thank my placement team of teachers who, has, who have been contributing in their own way. My student team headed by the president of placement cell, Mayank Mehta, and his entire team of students, I think around uh, 10 of them are in core and there are around 70 in the uh, grand uh, team of placement cell, each of them has been putting in their untiring efforts and passions. I'm proud to confess that most of these companies were tapped by them. They were invited by the students team of the placement cell. This is the event that the students have curated. This is an event for the students. I wish all the best to each and every one of you. And again, a very warm welcome to Prakar and you. Thank you all. Thank you, Aishna. Over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Your words have infused, I'm sure, all the students with a lot of enthusiasm and they must be all geared up to jump into the world of opportunities. The placement cell has had three successful editions of the internship come job fair. We have had companies like Apple, Bank of America, Biotools, LNT Construction and Paytm in the past who have recruited our students. Due to the unprecedented lockdown as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, for the very first time, the fourth edition of Placement Come Internship Week is being held online to introduce our students to more than 65 participating companies. Let us embark on this quest for opportunities together. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the chief guest for today, Mr. Prakar Singhal. Ma'am, Suman Ma'am has already given a very warm introduction to about Sir, but as a formality, I will introduce him again. Mr. Prakar Singhal is the Managing Director at Accenture and leads global FMA sales and practice function. Mr. Singhal is skilled in process migration, operations management, re-engineering, shared services, and management information systems. He is a finance, accounting, sales, and practice leader. I now request Mr. Singhal to deliver his lecture on the theme, Changing Job Scenario, and you. Over to you, sir. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Ashna. And, uh, uh, and thanks for inviting uh, Nilu and I for this forum. It's, uh, you know, about 26 years back, we were in the same place as you all, students. Um, 
we didn't know what to do. I mean, we had dreams, we had um, things in our mind, didn't know how, how the, I mean, no one has a crystal ball to see how the life is going to be, right? But just before I go on, I mean, as Aishna said, I'm, I'm right now in Accenture about four years, before which I did about three years in Cognizant, uh, heading their FNA, uh, finance and accounting business, before which I had done close to about 20 years with G Capital and Genpact, uh, most of which is again in finance and accounting business. I'm a, I'm a chartered accountant by qualification. Uh, that's the only clarity I had when I was in college that, look, I'll be a CA. And, and with that clarity, and it, 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 it used to be post-graduation that time, I mean, we had real fun in Shivaji College. So, so before I go on, I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, Neelu, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Neelu Singhal. And uh, like Prakar was mentioning, it's almost like close to three decades that, you know, uh, you know Shivaji was basically... Uh, a, a, a good uh, platform for us to, you know, uh, navigate our future uh, in terms of, you know, deciding, you know, what future is going to hold for us. And we actually didn't know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, what direction we had to take, but, you know, there were a few things that were very clear that A, we have to build a career. So Prakar and I uh, both, uh, you know, were very clear that, you know, we have to make something out of our lives. So, uh, so today, uh, you know, I uh, am the chief operating officer for Genpact. Uh, Genpact is a professionally managed services working for transforming client businesses. Uh, we work globally across multiple countries uh, and multiple centers in India. And uh, so, so 26 years been into this uh, professional journey. Uh, and I have to tell you that life has changed dramatically over these 26 years. You know, when I first got into my job, uh, and, uh, you know, I used to enter a boardroom. So, you know, there were people who were, uh, you know, they were all men around. And now, let's say, you know, so many years later, now when you enter the boardroom, you know, I mean, you've seen a women and uh, people, uh, uh, you know, so, so almost like what, 40% of, uh, you know, diversity is what we see today. So life has significantly changed. And there were a few things uh, Suman Ma'am was talking about, and we like to touch upon, you know, as we progress in the course of our conversation today. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so with that, uh, and a few reflection points, Dr. Sadev, uh, Dr. Rana used to be a principal that time, and uh, we see tremendous progress. We keep hearing, um, of course, uh, directly ourselves as we are alumni for, to Shivaji College, also from my father, Dr. Jian Singhal. Uh, uh, I think Shivaji College is, is making a lot of strides. Uh, you know, congratulations to you and your team. Uh, you know, Ms. Suman, you, you don't look aged at all. I mean, you don't seem to age at all. <laughs> You still look the same as you were our teacher that time, and 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 on this platform I can't you know say much bullshit. We have Dr. Mishra on the call as well, so he he'll, he'll tell that look uh, all that Prakar is telling or Neelu is telling is 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 is, is not correct uh, because he, he used to be our teacher and and he knows what kind of a student we were. So, um, so well, thanks once again to to invite us on this platform. Now now I think shifting uh, gears in terms of. If, if I look at, you know, how careers are changing, how expectations of clients are changing, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, if I break my career, which is spanning about close to 27 years, right? I, I would say that in three phases is, you know, one is the build phase when, uh, as I said, I mean, the only clarity I had is that I'll do a chartered accountancy. And I did that, I had two years of internship with, uh, with a chartered accountant firm. And that taught me a lesson that look, uh, Keeping books of record, etc., is not my cup of tea. I would like to be, because I did one year of internship with uh, GSK, I mean, which is Smith Klein Beach in that time, because of Alex. And and to the point you were making, uh, Suman Ma'am, that you know that internship gave me the clarity that what I don't want, and and which is where I mean I didn't go for a you know uh, my own practice. I, I said, look, I'm going to be into a corporate. I'm I'm going to be you know try to be a revenue generating person for the company because I could see in Smith Klein Beecham all the best of the bonuses best of the careers used to be with sales and marketing guys and not for the finance folks because used to you know uh, tie up the numbers look at compliance controllership and all of that and but the best of the opportunities used to come to sales and marketing so then as I qualified I joined a non-banking finance company that's G Capital in India they were just sort setting up that time that's that in my view was my first phase right which is the building of the career getting hang of the industry 
Uh, and what I learned is that I think developing depth is very, very important, right? So whatever you pick, so I picked financial services and which I built on in terms of G Capital became GenPact and uh, what it basically did is, you know, as a, as, a, as a financial services person, I was in the front, I was doing more of sales, I was not doing bookkeeping. So, so that basically fulfilled my dream and my personality and I could shape up my dream and my personality with that. And then as G, G Capital became GenPact, it gave me another opportunity because what we were selling is finance and accounting transformation or a back office to all the global companies in the world. And as you may know, um, finance and accounting services are sold not by the sales guys. It is sold best when it is delivered or the story being told by practitioners. Just because I used to do reconciliations myself, I used to do, I, I used to close the books, I used to stitch up the numbers myself, you know, during my internship and later on during my G capital days, I could go back to the controllers, you know, because we were a captive that time of a G, right? That look, this is how we can do it thousands of miles away with, with technology and with, 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 with all the internet connections, etc. right? So that was the first phase. Second, I would say is the phase two when I sort of stepped out of my comfort zone. So after having spent 20 years with Genpact, I sort of stepped out, tried, you know, to learn technology through Cognizant three years. And it really changed my spiel, if I will, right? Um, the way I would present the story to the client changed because I was more familiar, more comfortable talking technology as a finance person, right? And that started to make sense. And then I met the CEO of Accenture Operations, which is the BPO part of Accenture. And at that time, you know, my CEO or my boss was talking about uh, data science in the context of finance and accounting. And I said, look, this is interesting. It will take us many years to reach there in competition. So I switched over and I switched over without a job. There was no finite job I was filling in for. So, so my CEO liked me. I liked what he was saying. And we, we said, okay, let's, let's make it work. Let's join. I mean, so he didn't give me a job till today. It's been about four years. I don't have a defined job. So I'm, I'm supposed to be a disruptor. I'm supposed to be the one who's working with the sales guys across the globe. And wherever there is a finance and accounting deal, we, you know, we work together, collaborate and create a very client specific, bespoke, unique story for the client, right? To say that, look, as, as Accenture, we have spent millions of dollars in terms of, you know, having the latest assets, right? Leveraging the power of data science, artificial intelligence, analytics but they mean nothing to the client if we don't put it in, into their industry context, into their you know, evolution journey. Every client has their own journey. Every client has their own path they have traversed and they have their own experiences, they have their own problems. So asking them, them the right questions, listening to them, and then applying our tools to solve for those problems is what in, in a nutshell, you know, me and my team, we, we do. So I was challenging my boss that, look, this is not the way to tell a story. We used to do a far better job in, 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 in my Genpack days. And he said, okay, you keep complaining, go and hire people. So, so I put up a team of 40 practitioners and, and then started working with the sales guys to change our story. And, you know, it's been a very, very successful model. This is a model that's been now replicated across all other practices and solutions. But the point I'm making is, I think there are a few, right? In terms of um, listen to the clients very, very intentfully, whether it's your internship, whether it's your jobs you, you do you know, later on. If I remember about six, seven years back, the entire IT industry was hit very badly with the fact that, you know, um, colleges were churning engineers in hundreds and thousands and uh, all the IT companies were hiring loads of people because they had seen a lot of demand coming in from, an, from clients in, the, in terms of building infrastructure, you know, building, uh, you know, people doing coding, et cetera, right? About six, seven years ba later back, uh, require, clients requirements changed because their own ways of doing business change, right? We, we all saw how, uh, I mean, uh, I think Kodak as a company got wiped overnight because of smartphones having cameras. So, so I think in the last two decades, I mean, in the last 50 years, if you look at it, I mean, the innovations we have seen the, you know, if you minus the last 15 years in whatever we saw in 35 years was undone in the last 10, 10 15 years. If you look at the technology landscape, I mean, clients, ERPs, clients, technology landscape uh, has, has dramatically changed. So, so the IT industry couldn't see that coming, that what clients are needing is different, thereby 
I need to hire differently. I need to talk to the colleges and institutes differently so that the skills that students are coming with are matching with the client's requirement. And, and just because I think we all failed to do that, there was a little bit of a slum in the hiring and you know demand supply. There was a demand supply gap, right? And, and then of course, the entire institutes and all, all the companies, they sort of uh, refreshed, uh, shifted gears, added a lot of digital skills to the teams and created their own disruption model. And that's the age we are living in right now. So if you look at it, there are platform companies like, let's say, High Radio. There are platform companies like TradeShift. I mean, there are SaaS companies, right? Software as a service model. Uh, they, they, they have gone so deep into their own niche product, right? No one can do better order to cash, for example. And again, I'm getting very industry specific within finance and accounting, right? Um, even companies like us with our size and scale, we can't match the speed of innovation that is needed, right? Uh, because in the way cash is collected by a pharmaceutical company is very different from a consumer goods companies to a to a hospital to a healthcare company etc right so 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 there is a huge shift in skills in terms of so for example finance guys today and that's what we you know work with our clients together that you know finance folks don't have to close the books anymore Cli you know finance guys have to be very good at manipulating data they have to be very good at making pitches to their business units, right? To the business guys they support. So when a business guy has a meeting with a client, they can put all the information and data together and say that, look, this is the behavior. This is the five insights you have for this client before you go for this meeting. And imagine how powerful that becomes. So, so we are working with our clients across the globe and not that you know we are far behind in India, but the point is even in the most advanced countries, there are many clients who have still not scratched the surface in terms of the digital innovation or in terms of embracing digital into their back office function like finance and accounting, right? So anyway, I mean, I'll just take a pause. Anything, you know, uh, ma'am, you want to sort of uh, ask the students or anything you may have in your mind, but that, that's how we see, I mean, the market is getting disrupted. The providers are pushing the envelope in terms of what they offer very constantly. So there is a, I mean, there can't be a better time to innovate. There can't be a better time to than today where the, all the ecosystem players are sort of pushing the envelope to embrace digital, to embrace you know, new ways of working and taking their best products and offerings to the clients. So let me take a quick pause and see if you know it is resonating. Any particular area you want Nilu and I to sort of dwell deeper into. Yes, I, I think, Prakha, that was really quite an insight. Uh, Eshna, you take over and you can invite some questions from the students, and then you can introduce Nilu and let her also be giving her name. So uh, if any any student has any question, you can please write in the chat. These questions can be addressed uh, by our speakers. Uh, maybe uh, I, I think after listening to both our speakers, the students might come up with some uh, some queries which they would love to uh, ask them. So, uh, yeah. yes, ma'am. Ma yes, 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 I agree. Right. So, uh, I think we can move on with our uh, next speaker, our guest of honor for the day, Miss Neelu Singhal. Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, Miss Singhal has already in, uh, given a lovely introduction, but yet as uh, we, it's, it is our, uh, a part of our uh, event that we always uh, take an opportunity to introduce our speaker. So ma'am, I'm just introducing, reintroducing you. Miss Neelu Singhal is the Senior Vice President and COO for Services at Jetpack. She manages a global portfolio of over USD 250, uh, 250 mm servicing uh, several industrial clients. She has over 21 years of experience in setting up, running, and growing FMA, procurement, and HRO business for multiple clients. Ms. Single has in depth knowledge of business process analysis and design, process rationalization, capacity building, and performance measurement. Without much delay, I hand over the virtual desk to Ms. Neelu Singhal, who will be delivering her talk for the for today on the theme, Role of Women in Changing Jobs Scenario and Youth. Over to you, Ms. Singhal. 
Hey, Ashna, thanks so much. Uh, so I think I'll probably, uh, you know, tee up what uh, Suman ma'am was talking about and what Prakhar actually elaborated, I think, and what will be relevant for this group before I actually talk about, you know, role of women. I think three messages that I picked up, uh, which I think uh, I want to reiterate, it is very important for you. Uh, one is around future of work. What, uh, you know, so this whole 2020 has been a very unique year for us. Who would have thought same time last year, the whole color of uh, industry would change uh, with this pandemic hitting us. But you know, when you have some of these threats, you know, we also have these opportunities, we also get this opportunity to, uh, you know, think out of the box. So basically, uh, you know, if I was to talk about, uh, let's say a hospitality client, so, you know, I work very closely with all the CXOs of hospitality business, whether it is Hyatt, Hilton, any of these, you know, I mean, hotel business or, uh, you know, travel business, 90% of their revenue actually got wiped off uh, because nobody was traveling, nobody was, you know, doing any hotel booking. So come to think of it, how is that Hyatt would have survived? How is that Hilton would have survived, right? And Suman Mambo was talking about, is the future of work going to change for all of us? Indeed, who would have thought that in three months, you know, the whole industry would gradually shift to work from home? Something that which actually we thought was not possible, we made it possible within three months. So the learn, one big learning for all of us, and I think, you know, I wanted to definitely leave this message with all of you is that we need to think beyond, um, uh, we need to challenge our status quo every a single day. So talking about what would make, you know, sense for you, I mean, should I pick up internship? Uh, should I uh, in, a, in a smaller company or a bigger company, uh, what kind of, so you don't have to, you know, I mean, uh, uh, really, I mean, whenever you are in a situation, you really have to think through that, yes, what is going to be relevant and let's do it. Because, you know, some of this actually forced us to break our own mold, right? I mean, uh, or, you know, collaborate uh, much largely with, you know, the larger ecosystem, whether it is government authority, whether it is, you know, the in industry, uh, you know, the other companies in the industry or whether it is the, uh, you know, I mean, multiple people in the same uh, industry. So that future of work, in my view, is going to change. We will, we are talking about hybrid models and these hybrid models are, you know, there will be a, a significant chunk of population that will continue to work from home to make it, uh, make the client business more, uh, you know, uh, accurate. So, so I'm just giving you as one example that how a future of work is going to change. Number two, I think, you know, ma'am, you were talking about, which was, a, which was about acquiring new skills. See, one of the things in the industry, and this is absolutely relevant for each one of you who's on the call, that, you know, we have to think through that what is that, what, what are those skills that, you know, we have to gain today to keep us relevant for future. So what was good yesterday is no more good today. Like I said, what was good March same time last year is no more good today, right? So similarly, the skills. We have to constantly invest in ourselves uh, in up, upskilling so that you know we stay relevant and we stay tuned to what's happening in the industry. There are just so many avenues and we can, you know, obviously I know time is uh, limited today, but you know, we, Prakar and I would love to share with you that, you know, what are various avenues that are available wherein you, you can, you know, really look at upping your skills. Because industry, companies like Genpact, Accenture, and, you know, the other companies, they are really hungry for talent. Because if we have to innovate, talent is sitting right at the center of it. So if you have the skill uh, and, you know, you have the hunger, you have, uh, you know, the right attitude, I'm telling you, sky's the limit, uh, you know, you will, you, will, you will hit the ball out of the park. Uh, last but not the least on this part is this whole digital transformation. Uh, I heard, uh, con you know, those uh, those snippets around AI and, you know, I'm sure all you're talking about machine learning, AI, data science, analytics, and what all and whatnot. I think uh, if you are not digitally savvy, I think we'll be out of market very shortly. And this is true for any and everyone. We, we have to ensure that, you know, I mean, this whole team uh, which is there on the call is absolutely you know adding that skill set on technology because you know wherever your domain which is finance and accounting what Prakar was talking about and you know uh, the digital they come and intersect that's where I think you know uh, is the line of best fit I mean the way we call it uh, so uh, so I'm not going to complicate this any further and you know give too much of gyan there but uh, just on the role of women and I was just um, you know mentioning that 
uh, given that you know this has been um, this is a international women's um, month you know march 8 to we celebrate i take absolute pride in um, uh, sorry i don't know whether uh, whether your uh, the screen has got hung but if you can still hear me uh, i take absolute pride in saying that you know i mean specifically the diverse profiles you know and uh, you know are making significant strides you know to get to the board getting to the you know the global leadership of the companies or getting to the top positions and i think you know uh, the whole scenario has changed like i was mentioning at the start of the conversation 26 years back when i got into or maybe 30 years back when i got into a job uh, versus today i think the uh, the canvas has changed i would encourage strongly encourage each one of you to keep challenging uh, yourself to make that change for yourself and uh, you know get to the forefront and say that yes i can do it and i'm telling you uh, the, all the companies today are so pro women getting into you know the leadership positions uh, so with this i would like to wish each one of you best of luck for the future if there's any help prakar and i can do to help uh, craft your career we'll be more than happy to uh, do that because there's so much of gratitude we have for shivaji college uh the place that you know i mean uh, like i said has been instrumental uh, uh for setting up our careers thank you so much mr prakar and ms neelu it's it's wonderful to have you here especially it's a proud moment for shivaji college to have the alumni at this position that you can come back and help our students and that was a lovely talk i mean through small uh, stories and your own uh, life events you've managed to uh, speak, uh, tell our uh, students a lot so there's one question from chetna she's doing bcom and wants to pursue mba in hr so is it uh, is it a good i think she means is it a good time to go in this field so i think the important thing is that why why do you want to choose chetna what you're choosing so why hr is it a field that really interests you or the motivation is something else uh, i uh, i think she can take her time in asking that so uh, she also wants to know what are the uh, what are the job opportunities for life science students can chetna unmute herself and put her a question if she wants to yeah um Then Prakash has can... brought up a very nice point. Then why does she want to take up HR? I think it's a good conversation. It's going to enlighten a lot of us. Uh, yes, participants can unmute this. Thank you, Chetna. You can please uh, speak to uh, Sir and uh, convey your uh, question and any queries that you want. As I as I read her response, she's saying that it interests her. I, I think okay. that's. that's an important point if 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 it interests you chetna absolutely yes i think um, uh, if you see i mean evolution i mean i spoke about finance and accounting but if you look at the evolution of human resource as a as an area it has evolved tremendously yes. the amount of analytics amount of artificial intelligence that are being used in in human resources for a company which has business in india or human resources as a service itself i mean if you look at hr as a service is a very very important offering that i mean india provides to a lot of global companies i mean there are platform companies like adp there are many other companies like manpower etc i mean there are, there are the specialists but then there are of course a uh, general companies who are uh, selling a charge as a service with a lot of platform etc that kind of thing. oh the uh Sangya wants to know what are the job opportunities for life science students. So life sciences as a sector, in my view, is exploding a lot. Um, it's not only, um, I mean, it's it's. I mean, if you look at, I mean, my days when I did GSK, I mean, of course, I did the consumer side of the business internship there, but there were people like my myself. They were doing industrial training with GSK Pharma as well. Uh, so it has gone tremendously. Uh, it has, you know, the landscape has changed, you know, dramatically for India. India has become a hub, uh, not only for you know providing services uh, to pharma companies like the compliance services, clinical trials, 
a pharmacovigilance etc so those are a lot of new areas that have emerged in the commercial space if you look at it's been dominated by a lot of marketing big marketing companies uh, so all i'm saying nutshell if you look at biopharma or you know the generic drugs makers etc india has played a huge role uh, you know with covaxin being developed in india you know we are on the global landscape i mean we are absolutely on the map um, I, i remember i mean life sciences used to be one of my very important verticals i worked very closely with gsk with astrazeneca with abbott uh i think if you look at people within their offices sitting in different parts of the globe i mean if you look at if you go to novartis headquarters in basel you will find every fifth sixth person as a, as, as an asian right so these companies have been at the forefront of embracing talent across the globe now also over a period of time for cost pressures etc they have built hubs in india there are many services within the life sciences sector that are being provided from india So I think it's a great sector. Depending upon what your field is, it's science or it's some of the you know what do you call uh, back office services. Uh, I mean the whole landscape is very interesting. I mean all the all the life sciences stocks are doing very well. Just so you know. I totally agree with the sir that uh, life science is definitely doing extremely well, specifically in this uh, era. Uh, so. Uh, 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 Mihira Arora wants to know what are the qualifications she would require if she wants to go for career counseling for high school or college students. It's interesting. Um, in fact, that's another area that has, uh, over the last, I would say, two decades, has evolved so well in in the Indian landscape, right? Um, I think first and foremost, you need experience itself. Uh, I don't. I think it's one of course this qualification because those qualification gives you first hand experience of what it takes to crack an MBA, what it takes to you know go through this whole decision process. That look post my tenth, what do I choose? Post my twelfth, what do I choose? So of course, as a first hand learner, you experience all of that. Um, in terms of certifications, etc., I need to check. Uh, I don't know if you know what are the certifications. students can acquire to be to be a master in uh, to, to gain grip uh, you know how they help uh, students like themselves to chart their careers that's that's what you mean right there are there are so many counselors in delhi and cr uh, i think they are doing a tremendous service in helping client, you know students chart their own path and and in my view we are living in time where i think a lot of uh, uh, stereotypes have broken So there is no more, you know, that we, you know, students have to stick to find, you know, finite paths. Uh, uh, their parents and students are both happy to explore areas which are outside that. So, so I think, in my view, if you are a person who is genuinely or naturally inclined to get into a lot of conversations, you know, you have a lot of curiosity to know what's going on in people's life, what's happening around. I think that that one that one attribute that will really help you do that better. Well. uh muskan wants to know uh, which is a better mba uh, in management or in hr so my view is it really depends on what you want to do so chetna was asking a similar question she is doing become honors right and uh, she wants to so if you know working with people uh, see hr is a very specific field and uh, uh, so if your interest is like you want to work in that you want to work with people uh you want to work uh, uh you know obviously working on the hiring strategy of the company etc etc and you know and then so this is centered around people and hiring and uh, talent uh then i think you know that's the feel for you but you should definitely have a knack on uh, that uh, because it's a function role while when you do mba uh and you do it in a uh, in a particular field then you know you get to the mainstream which is like you know i mean you could get into operations or you know you could uh, get into a sales job or it could be so so there is there, these are two different paths absolutely dependent on what you you know really want to do and i see another question here which is talking about that you know should i do mba directly after graduation or there must be a corporate uh, experience first see here's my recommendation see once uh, if you were to do mba uh, so my view is that uh, you should look to get some experience 
because once you do a year or couple years uh, you know i mean experience with a corporate so when you do internship for example you know you will get to know what what you want to do and what you don't want to do like you know prakar was mentioning in his speech that uh, when i did my internship i realized what i didn't want to do because you know that clarity comes only when um, when you get into a corporate in fact i'll share a personal example here so uh so i had received a award which is company's top award and uh, the ceo of the company and the entire global leadership uh you know, was there in israel and you know the award ceremony was uh, happening in israel my daughter who's now 22 years and must be your age uh, uh, or uh, around this internship. so she's also going through that internship process so she went and asked tiger tiger is basically the ceo of genpack he she asked that you know tiger what and you know that's my daughter she says what should i do i am a i'm doing my btech she is doing a computer engineering so she was saying should i do my uh, ms or should i do my mba he said anushka uh, take a break after you do your btech and uh, uh, you know gain some experience take a year or two year of corporate experience and then decide what is closer to your heart because you know there is no right or no wrong answer in my view it is basically where is that your uh, headset is because you know you only get to know once you experience that so that will be my recommendation to you also rest obviously you have to decide on your own that uh, do this internship take it very seriously see you know if you get get into internship for a period of 6 months or an year i mean try and evaluate all the doors and the windows of an organization don't waste your time because a lot of times what happens typically in internship and i'm sharing that you know people say oh uh, you're still in that college mode and uh, you know graduation from college to real work actually takes a little bit of time so my one recommendation to this group is take that period uh, as a uh, as a time when you can really test what is that you want to do because you won't get this time again uh then if you get into one field then obviously you know i mean there's a direction that gets set for you that's the way i look at it so i think we are we have questions pouring in um so gautam asks how do you see supply chain management and logistics in evolving in the future uh also can an mb and scm be good option for the future i think it's a fascinating field i think supply chain and um uh, this whole you know um sourcing to procure to pay uh, as we call it right it's a, it's a fascinating field uh, but it's a niche field right you may have to spend a lot of years in developing uh, uh, excellence and 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 kind of depth in it uh, sorry yeah. no what i was saying is i think it's an excellent field uh, so you may have to uh understand so you may you may want to do few uh what what you call generic courses like mba etc you want to do that that's fine but then it, as i said it's a specialized area you may want to develop uh niche skills you may want to familiarize yourselves with systems which are uh, some of the top systems in the in the supply chain field that will really help you because uh you want to gain functional depth at the same time also gain the technical depth as much as you can so there's a concern from bishu that uh, in finance and accounting sector is it possible for ai to take up the sector in upcoming future in say maybe 20 or 30 years hence uh, so if it is it is so is it advisable to choose finance and accounting yeah i mean it's interesting i mean uh, we are developing an ai asset that will clear the cpa test so so we have already got the robot or the algorithm to crack uh, close to about 60% of i mean the robot is somewhere between 55 to 60% scores the robot is getting uh, of course there is a, there is still a way to go but uh, you know uh, i mean if you look at finance and accounting world it is no more the same i mean the bookkeeping is done by erps the system itself so we don't have to do that anymore i think it's about for us to hone our skills in terms of what do we make of that data what do we make of that information that the tool is giving me so you know uh, as i said earlier right uh, our presentation skills our ability to communicate to our business user business stakeholders right that basis the last 6 months analysis etc this is the trend i see right um, over the last 10 20 years you, you would have seen lots of cfos becoming ceos right 
in which was not the case when we were doing ca right because it used to be a very back office function but cfos over a year they've taken the role of being the business leaders right so it it is absolutely fascinating i mean very close to my heart that's my bread and butter but at the same time in 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 general also it's a it's a very uh, it's a it's a phenomenal field it's just that stay relevant you know equip yourself with what what's happening latest and bishu if i can just add uh, it is really fascinating that all of us are part of this transformation from getting away from the old to see the new getting uh, the new normal getting shaped up right i mean what a fascinating journey it is i won't worry too much uh, on this honestly uh, the only thing i think that what suman ma'am was also talking and i think i'm probably repeating it again at the cost of repetition acquire new skills uh, to stay relevant for the future i mean if you are able so whether you do supply chain or whether you do data right. science or whether you do data one thing that we look at in organization is what is that you bringing on the table see general management is no more relevant i'm telling you if you don't have um, any particular uh, skill to offer on the table survival is difficult yeah so stay relevant ensure that you know i mean you are upskilling uh, and then i mean like i said sky is the limit yeah so even in the supply chain field supply chain field if you look at get industry depth i mean in i mean today when we hire people right across different levels i look at function you know clearly that the how solid the person is in, on the functional understanding how much this person understands technical i mean i don't expect a person to be deep technical deep functional the person could be deep technical you know average functional or deep functional average technical that's fine but if there is an industry skill they have so they can really say that look i really understand supply chain of a consumer good company or i really understand uh, you know a, a supply chain for a for a manufacturing firm i mean try and do that as well i mean add industry to your repertoire thank you so much uh, mr singhal and ms singhal for uh, answering the queries of our students i'm sure they are all very enthusiastic gearing themselves up to enter the field i will now request the student president placement cell mayank mehta to deliver the vote of thanks i now hand over the virtual dais to mayank over to you um thank you ekna ma'am uh, now i would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who have contributed to the successful organization of this inaugural ceremony presita 21 internship and placement week first of all i express my heartfelt gratitude to the chief guest of the day mr prakash jinder and our guest honored ms neeru singer for their invaluable time thank you so much for sharing your knowledge knowledgeable insights with us i would also like to thank our respected principal sir and convener of placement cell ms suman khurbanda ma'am for always guiding and supporting us i would also like to thank our teachers committee of placement cell for their constant guidance also a special thanks to the participants who have been such a wonderful audience this session last but not the least i would like to thank the student team of placement cell for their invaluable help thank you so much everyone that's all for today looking forward to your active participation for the next 5 days thank you yes mayank i hope you have shared the uh, slots and schedules of the two next 4 uh, 5 days including the offline uh, thing yes 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 thank you uh, prakar and you that was really really nice and so wonderful to have you over and i absolutely agree with you you really resonated with me when you said that upskilling and adding skills to the uh, current you know curriculum is an absolute must for every student and i think both of you have given a good takeaway to our students in today's session and i hope they will follow your words of wisdom and of course you will be role models for many of them today thank you so much ma'am i don't know if you know that i mean besides all the solid foundation of career uh, shivaji college gave us anilu and i also met in the college so uh, so it's a, it's a great personal contribution as well <laughs> and i think i just one more i want to give one piece of advice to all the students that follow your passion right so like i i you know played cricket for delhi under 16 gave it up you know studied very nicely in my 11th and 12th then played for shivaji college and then played for my companies that i worked for i think 
it teaches us a lot of thing i mean if i feel i am successful in my career one big factor is the sportsman spirit you know you can't win every time you lose many time you have to you know get back up running again uh, and choose a partner who can keep pushing you to do better and that's that's what neelu you know has done i mean she was always focused ma'am i mean she said i don't know i don't know what you guys are doing i am here to study i'm going to get my first division in bcom then i'm going to get my ca and then i'm going to get my job <laughs> wow. uh, wish you all the luck guys thank you thank you everyone uh, and uh, humbled and pleasure to be here uh, any help we can be off at any given point of time please feel free to reach out to any one of us thank you thank you thank you bye bye